Around half of what you say isn't heard. 96% of us claim to listen well, but we only hear around 50%. It was a sales call and yeah. the prospect was going on like a tangent about their business. It's so funny because some of the learnings that we know now and the way that we do things now, Moby would never do that now. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's actually yeah. very different. But yeah, he, this potential client went on like a rampage or whatever, a rant. And then when they finished talking, Moby was like, so can I talk now? Like, mm. And if you are concerned that someone is not getting the brevity of the com of the topic that you've brought to them, just be honest with them. Honest and direct, I think, will always, always help in saying, Linda, it looks like you've, you've said a few different things after I've shared this one topic. I really want to make sure you understand how important this is to us right now yeah. in this moment that we're in. Red flags that someone isn't listening effectively. Sorry, what was that, Linda? <laughs> I, <get it? laughs> I love that. <laughs> Welcome to the Marketing Mentors Podcast brought to you by Red Pandas Digital. I am Tasha joined by Linda and we also have Ellie, special guest here today. Welcome Ellie. Hopefully no farting. Hopefully. <laughs> Never know with Ellie. <laughs> now, to be fair, Linda, I was definitely listening, but I'd love for you to repeat what you just said. Yeah. So today we're talking about red flags uh, that you can spot when someone isn't uh, actively listening or listening effectively. Mm. Um, we have experienced this in the past. We've always, we've also been victim to this we and do done it. this to other people as well. Yes. Um, but if you have a hunch that someone isn't listening, then these are some really good tips to be able to kind of identify when that's happening. Yeah. But then also be able to work through that because and we know that, you know, people go through things and what am I trying to say here? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that in reality, uh, people have a lot on their minds. Okay. Yes. And so, yeah. you know, it's not an opportunity to get offended, but it's an opportunity to be able to work through the yeah. conversation. Have empathy, be curious. Yeah. What's going on. Um, I think it's also worth noting, like we'll probably speak more like we normally do in this podcast, more in a professional, uh, stance. Um, I I wonder as we go through this list if we can use these same things in our personal, you know, conversations that we have. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you got to you got to just be like emotionally intelligent about who you're talking to and how you quote unquote like call them out for not listening. Yeah, I think it also depends on your relationship with them and how yes. well you know them to be able yeah. to call something out. Like it's like pick and choose your moments, yeah. I guess. Hundred percent. And then how you speak to that person, right? Yeah. Um, because we could have a whole other episode on like. Husbands and fiancés not listening. <laughs> <laughs> in which you know very well. So <laughs> Yes, exactly. We, we both know very well on that topic. But yeah. we'll, um, yeah, let's get into these uh, flags that you call of. Um, actually, I do want to mention this stat that you put in here. Half Around half of what you say isn't heard. 96% of us claim to listen well, but we only hear around 50%. That makes sense, to be honest, because I feel like we can't, take all the information in, like our brains will filter some of that out yeah, and, you'll and only remember the important stuff yeah. that we find important, so not necessarily true. what the other person finds so important. True. And in client facing stuff, how many times have we had to tell a client the same thing a few times? So true. Because it's important to us, but they're not, not understanding them. how important it is on their end, which probably oh, we haven't communicated exactly. well enough. And it makes so much sense as to why we've worked as like worked our asses off to be better communicators mm. so that we can say the same things that we've been saying <laughs> for all the years, but just in like a way that our clients and team members are going to hear it better. Yeah. Right? Oh, I love that. It's mm. A really good moment. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> what are some of the? Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna talk about these signs now. Just keep in mind, if someone isn't listening effectively, you know, why is this so important to us? You know what I mean? Well, so we're gonna answer that too. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so we spoke about a few things. I think number one, like, and we'll mention, like, we'll have examples of this, but it hurts your feelings, like, not in a professional setting, but in a personal setting. You know, Would like we've always then? been in that. Yeah. Like Ooh, we've hurt. been part of that yeah. where someone like is actively just they're tuned out of the conversation yeah. and it's hurtful. But outside of that, I think from a business perspective, like it can lead to like un unaligned expectations, yep. missed opportunities, low productivity yep. and misunderstandings. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we'll go through examples of these. All right. All right. Flag one. 
interrupting in- you frequently. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, such a joke since today I am. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. So first of all, um, we hate people interrupting people at Red Banders. <laughs> like it's like one of our pet hates and it happens. Don't get me wrong. It happens. And mm. there's, and you'll, we call each other out on it, number one. And if it happens frequently, we will like make it a point to be like, hey, you interrupt all the time. Yeah. Um, or we'll apologize. Say so like, like, I'm really sorry for interrupting and then do the thing that they need to do, right? Part of that radical candid framework and feedback that we have. Yeah. But someone interrupting you and frequently doing it is mm. a clear sign that they're not listening to what you're saying and they just want to share their own thoughts. Yeah. They're not listening to you to understand you or to understand the thing that you're talking about. Right. They've just got their own things in their mind and they're just waiting to get that out. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say I've been a part of this recently. Like I'm trying to search for an example here, but I feel like for the most part, at least I haven't encountered this recently. Like some of the other examples I will share. Yeah. I absolutely have. But yeah, someone interrupting you frequently. I mean, it would feel really annoying oh, to be honest, yeah, like irritating. not being able to get your words out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe in, in some interviews that we've had recently yep. with hiring account managers, yep. when the other person is speaking a lot and it's hard to get a word in. You have to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Like you actually then have to interrupt them and f- try and find your moment to interrupt them, which it's actually so feels really uncomfortable for when you're not someone who interrupts others frequently. 100%, yeah. Like you know I, what I mean? can do it, but I don't like it. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. But it's, again, part of the – the communication skills that we have yeah. and that we train on and we look for when we're meeting and talking to people. Yeah. Um, I think in our team we are fortunate everyone's like in that same, like we've all had the same training and some are going through it now mm. and like interruption is just not something that happens. Remember, um, and I'm going on the flip side of this actually, oh, but no. I think it's interesting. Um, oh, remember a long time ago we either did a role play or we did training on if we're in an important call and mm. we need to interrupt the other person yeah. and like how to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like a sales call. Maybe Mobes was part of it as well. Yeah. And he had to do something to like get their attention oh. or say like, can I speak now? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I, and I feel like you did that. You might have yeah. said, can I speak now or something yeah, like that. Yeah, he was on, it was, it was a sales call and yeah. the prospect was going on like a tangent about their business. It's so funny because some of the learnings that we know now and the way that we do things now, Moby would never do that now. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's actually yeah. very different. Yeah. But, yeah, he, this potential client went on like a rampage or whatever, a rant, and then when they finished talking, Moby was like, so can I talk now? Mm, <laughs> yeah. So you don't and, think he'd do that now? Uh, no, no, not the way he does sales now. The way, yeah. that he, he, the way he coaches sales and the way he does sales you you want the client to be talking. If anything, if the client's gone right. on a rant on something, I would have a bet to say that he's lost authority in the mm. conversation and he lost the authority by not setting the expectations and vanguarding properly. Yeah. So he's he's basically allowed or he asked a bad question, which yes. allowed the client to go on that rant. Mm-hmm. And then he was forced to do something like that to get that authority back. Now I don't can't tell you if it worked or not. And like this is levels, right? This is levels of stuff. Like maybe it works with some people, maybe it works with others or not. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I do remember that where it was like he just had to interrupt or interject and be like, okay, is it my turn now type of thing? Mm. But um yeah, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Let's go to the next flag, Linda. Yep. Uh so mostly sharing their thoughts. So them focusing more on what they have to say than listening to what you have to say. It's almost similar to interrupting, right? Like often people that interrupt are then sharing their own thoughts. Yeah. I'm making a huge generalization here. I don't have any hard evidence. I think I think the way that this could feel is when like you have a thought and you bring it to the table, maybe you're in a group of people, and without that person letting your thought like kind of filter through for people to be able to comment and give air to, that person then comes on top of you with their own thought. Yeah. And they're not really acknowledging what you brought to the table. I think that's what that could feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just disregarding your ideas and bringing their own on top of that. Yeah. Well, like, you know, when you're um, like, this is outside of work now. So in a more social, personal setting mm. and you might be sharing a story of your own thing or whatever it might be. And like the person in the conversation, you can see they're just waiting. They're just they're waiting to like, to do their, to say their <laughs> own thing. And then they do say their own thing. And it's like, 
not that it's unrelated, but it's like completely about them. And there's like almost no, like you said, no acknowledgement of what you've also just shared, regardless of what you've just shared. There's just none at all. Yeah. That to me is generally someone that's not looking to hear you, but just wants to be heard. Yeah. A hundred percent. I feel like when we first started this podcast, I probably did a few of the things that we're talking about right now. Maybe. And it's like, it's it's funny because like we, we're not saying this stuff that it's bad, like there's a bad intention behind it. No. You can do a lot of these things and have like the best intentions, but you might just not be aware that you're doing them. Like yeah. as, as simple as that. Like I remember when we first started the podcast, T, like I was like thinking about the next thing to say because I didn't want to have silent moments mm. or you know, like the conversation not flow and I wasn't actually like actively listening to what you were saying. No, thanks, Linda. <laughs> I mean, were you? No, Honestly, I, I remember, remember I was like at the beginning, like the first few episodes, I was like really nervous, yeah, you know, like enough, speaking into a mic for the first yeah. time in this setting. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's it's interesting because as we talk about these things, again, like it's not, it's not bad intentions behind it, mm. but it's being aware that you're yeah. doing these things. Agree, agree. And there's levels, like there's levels mm. to it. You know, you don't realize that you're doing the thing that you're doing. And sometimes it's hard. Like when you are tired, for whatever reasons, it's hard to like effectively and actively listen. Like it takes a lot of brain power to really listen to someone yeah, properly and then respond deeply and meaningfully as opposed to just responding for the sake of responding. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 And like if you want to, if you want to get deep, man, like we could be in a really deep, effective listening conversation that is like goes for hours. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If you want to if you want to go that deep into it, it will go for, for a very, very long time. Like if you keep unpacking and keep going into that yep. kind of like cycle of it. Yeah. So let's bring it back to obviously we're working, we're we're talking about in the professional setting. We've yep. got a team, we've got colleagues or clients, whatever it might be. Some of these signs or flags, as Linda mentioned before, could just be indications that someone's not um, actively listening or effectively listening. Mm -hmm. Again, always, like we will always assume positive intent. Maybe they have had a really big rough night. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You should be at work if you've had a big night. Uh, Maybe they've had a rough night. Maybe they've got a newborn that's been keeping them up so they're just struggling to keep their eyes open, let alone listen to anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've got some shit happening at home. Like, you don't know, maybe they're not feeling well, whatever it might be, yeah. we have to assume positive intent and not not be defensive about why someone's not listening to us, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, cool. All Next right. One. Uh, finishing your sentences. <laughs> so they're assuming too early to understand your issue or what you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> this one gets me. I actually Does hate it? it. I hate it when someone tries to finish my finish sentences. Finish your sentences? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't mind that. I don't mind that. That's okay. Right? It was like twins. Is this <laughs> twins. It's like, and this happens sometimes at work when you're talking about something and someone thinks they know what you're talking about and then they just like interrupt mm. with something that finishes your sentence and it's like, that is not what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you can read my mind now? But oh, thanks okay. for that. Yeah, I'm like, okay, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the tip. Don't do that. That's not, that's not what we encourage you to. Uh, but yeah, look, someone finishing your sentences. It's cute, right? Like, oh, finish yeah. each other's sentences. But it's- that's a hard one to call out without just maybe being direct about it, I would say. Like with some of these other things, like, and we'll give examples on like things that you can ask or reframe the conversation with. I feel like that's a hard one. You might just yeah, have yeah. to call that one out yeah. if it's repetitive yeah. and just say how it makes you feel. Not like what they're doing, but like when you when you do that thing, it actually makes me feel this sort of way. Yeah, or it's really annoying. Just like it's really annoying. <laughs> just dumb. <laughs> Direct. <laughs> yeah, it's like it doesn't matter how I feel about it. It's just, <laughs> excuse me, it's just annoying. Beep that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's Woo. move on. Um, okay, number four is generic repetitive responses. Oh, so yes. they could be saying it's interesting, interesting. or I see. Oh, wow. oh I see. Yeah, I do interesting. Oh. Interesting is 100% my generic response. <laughs> <laughs> I think it actually is mine is. as well. Yeah, if you yeah. hear me say if interesting. If I'm thinking, yeah, if we're, if we're <laughs> in a call and we're like brainstorming or ideating yeah. and I'm like in the flow and I'm thinking of things, when you're giving me like ideas, mm-hmm. I'm most likely saying yeah, interesting because I'm also like <laughs> trying to come up with ideas. Which is Linda's uh, response for shut the F up. I'm trying to focus <laughs> on my own ideas. Mm, we'll consider that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Interesting to me is like 
I don't know what else to say, so yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say interesting. Yeah. You know that Kath and Kim? Oh, it's interesting. It's unusual. It's different. Mm. I will do that every time. Like I won't say it like that. Yeah. But it, that's um, if I – it's less about I'm not listening. I just don't yeah. know how to respond. I think the the problem here as well is, is like if you're not adding anything meaningful ever in the conversation and you're just saying like, oh, yeah, okay, interesting. Over and over and over, yeah, yeah, cool, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Like, yeah. Then it becomes like, okay, am I having this conversation with myself right now? Yes, yes. And then that's when the breakdown happens, I would say. I would say so. And if the person that's talking like realises it, they see it, they feel it, then you've done a bad job at pretending like you're listening. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? I feel like there's a a coaching question that we could ask Mm. here. We've got one written, which we saw online. I don't know how it's sitting with me, though. It could be slightly reworded. Okay. But it's, I'm curious, like, what have you heard me say so far? (laughs) But, like. I do that with my (laughs) (laughs) three-year-old. What did mummy just say? (laughs) And we wouldn't say it like that, but it's, like, like actually being curious with it and saying, like, I'm curious, like, I've been speaking at you for a little while. Like, what have you taken from that? See, I feel like. That is a question that that's not the direct question. Mm. Like you're asking that because you've noticed that I'm not listening. Yeah. So why don't you just call a spade a spade and say, hey, it looks like you're not listening. Because what's on your mind? There's you assuming in that still. Yeah, no, you're right. You know what I mean? Like you've taken a cue and again, like they they that could be their way. It depends how well you know them. Okay. If it was you and me, yeah, you're saying that to me. Yeah, yeah, true, true. I think if we haven't built that understanding Report, yeah. of how they like engage in conversation, yeah. then there could be another way to be able to get to the answer without what about, it being obvious. Like is something on your mind? You yeah. Just, you seem distracted. I think that could be okay. Like if mm. there's enough signals there and they could say like, what do you mean? And you've picked up enough signals to be able to share that. Yeah. Like if it's a once-off thing, then it might be a bit direct. Yeah, I don't uh, know. Is something on your mind? Yeah, yeah, interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I it's think it depends one, on the context. I was in. A, I was in a call a few weeks ago with a client. They paid us for a customer journey mapping workshop, and I had met these people before. Ever, I mm-hmm. just had to rock up to the workshop and deliver it. Right, and it was nice. Love that. <laughs> and there was there was a gentleman in the call. I can't remember his name for the life of me, but he didn't like what I was saying at one point. I think it was talking about price on a website. Oh, and and like yeah. th- those conversations aren't meant for customer journey mapping workshops, right? Yeah. I, I will not go into those conversations in those workshops because right. they are heated conversations mm. and I know people don't like. They're not wanna, the point of that call. Not, exactly, thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. not the objective of that call. But when I mentioned it, I remember getting a look and I was like, I'm not going to let this pass, uh, whatever his name was. <laughs> I, I was, and I hadn't met him yet, right? But I was like, uh, let's call him Jerry for, you know, this I was like, oh, Jerry, I go, I saw that facial expression. You know, what emotion did that invoke when I said put price on your website? And then it obviously opened up a big can of worms. So I think like I don't don't know how to articulate, but when you know your own communication style, Mm. strengths, weaknesses, like I love joking around. I will use joking around with anyone and everyone Mm -hmm. to diffuse maybe tension or awkwardness. Yeah. Even in the sales coaching, not a sales coach, but the sales coaching I did the other day with our client, Mm. um, one of the, you know, traditionally more like reserved people that were in my group, I, he was like obviously rolling his eyes when I said, we got to do role plays. Like I knew he didn't want to do them or be here. She's snoring so loud. (laughs) Uh, and I, I was like, um, I'm like, oh, it looks like you're going to have the funnest day ever. Like, are you sarcasm? Yeah. And that type of like that works for me. So I feel like I'd probably use something like. You like, could do that for something like this. I didn't know these people, right? Like, So I think yeah. I can still do that as long as it's always. And, and this, this goes for anyone and everything. It's always got to come from a genuine place of care. Yeah. Like if you are sitting there thinking that you're better than that person Mm -hmm. or you're imparting judgment or you think you have something better to be doing with your time, that is going to come across. Yeah, 100%. Right? Sometimes I have said things to people and I've realized, oh, wow, they've they've misunderstood me just now Mm -hmm. and they think I'm a bitch. Yeah. Right? And then I've had to backtrack and just, you know, yeah, sort it out. But for the most part, I'll be direct and I'll use jest and joking and that type of stuff, eye contact and almost like pull my vulnerabilities down first mm. to say something like, hey, it doesn't look like you're listening. Is everything all right? 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, am I boring you? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Something, yeah, something like that. That's a good one. I actually have used that before. Yeah. Am I boring you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you yes. say it when you're laughing, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got two things in their eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, everything's really fine. <laughs> All right, that's All right. a good one. Let's that's do a, a few one. more, yeah? yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, um, so we had delayed off-topic responses. I don't know if we need to spend too much time on that. Um, they aren't fully processing the issue discussed. Yeah. Move you on? Could, you could argue that. We'll move on. But, like, like, look, yeah, maybe. Maybe someone takes too long to respond to what you just asked them. Mm-hmm. There's a chance that they weren't listening. Yeah. Uh, or there's a chance that they really just need a little bit more time and silence to process what you've just said. So True. just benefit of the doubt. Just be curious. Yeah. Call, call it out. Be like, hey, that took you a really long time to respond. Are you listening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> if you said it like that, it would be okay. See what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I genuinely believe, Cam, my mission in life is going to get everyone just to be like m- joke more. Use you know humor I mean? to get just through everything. Just use humor more because it helps yeah. and then everyone laughs and it's not awkward and it's fun. You know what you, I mean? You can do that. I get away with that less because naturally like I'm more serious than I you. I think you could do it though. You could do I it. I can at times, but yeah. I can't use humor to get me out of everything. Like <laughs> for me, it just makes sense to like hit the nail on the head. Yeah, fair enough. Fair yeah. Enough. All right. Okay. Next one uh changing the subject often um so this is an indicator that they aren't grasping how important the issue is to you don't know if i've got any examples changing the subject setting. often i i experienced this recently um and it's funny because i didn't tie it to them not active listening yeah i just thought that they had um maybe issues like holding attention or that they struggle just maintaining attention. Um, and it, it was combined with a lot of other things that made me feel that way, Mm. like on this list as well. So there was like a lack of eye contact, which we'll talk about. They were looking at their device and on top of that, then they were changing the subject often. So they were talking a lot and spoke through like five different topics in a few minutes. And it just felt like I couldn't keep up. Mm. And I like I didn't think that it was. It's funny because I know you might mm. think different on this, right? Like yeah. I didn't think in the moment it was them not actively listening. I thought it was more like I was like that's that's interesting. Like yeah, without without opening this can of worms. Yeah, and I know we said we wouldn't go there, but I'm going to say something. Yeah, um, like people with attention deficit. Yeah, you know syndromes and stuff like that do struggle to maintain. Uh, one topic of conversation. Mm. Now, I don't think I have ADHD, but I know that I can change topic of conversation in in a in one conversation with someone. I can have about five or six different topics going. Yeah, because it's sometimes it's just the way it's a, who you're with, how comfortable you are with them, the way you talk, the way you process mm-hmm. things. Like it's, I get it, right? I get it. So I would again take this one with a grain of salt. Yeah. And if you are concerned that someone is not getting the brevity of the com- of the topic that you've brought to them, just be honest with them. Honest and direct, I think, will always always help in saying, Linda, it looks like like you you said a few different things after I've shared this one topic. I really want to make sure you understand how important this is to us right now. Yeah. In this moment that we're in. Yeah. Or just say like, I just want to bring it back to yeah, what we were talking about, if that's okay. Yeah. And then continue on. Exactly. And yeah. I, and I think it doesn't matter if someone does have a, um, you know, a neurodivergent thing or not. Like, I think you can still, you treat everyone the same. Yeah. Everyone the same. Unless they are like, like nonverbal, non comprehending the things that you're saying like yeah. and that's a whole different thing yeah then like treat everyone the same assume positive intent yeah open clear and candid conversations and communications i think you will be fine um we mentioned lack of eye contact mm, um which I, I don't know do you have examples t like i think like that makes sense of course and it's in the office kind of like easy to bring back like that could be like yeah. um Maybe like is not. everything okay on your end like i noticed You've been looking away a little bit. Is everything it, okay? I like being depends. curious with it. I guess it depends as well on the person, right? Like yeah. Sean, my husband, doesn't make a lot of eye contact in general. He mm. does with me, but I've observed him not making a lot of eye contact with people. Have you spoken about it? Yeah, yeah, many times. And, yeah, right. And he's like, he feels really uncomfortable making eye contact with people. Yeah. He's better at it now, but like when we first started dating and we were out and about, like he wouldn't make eye contact with people. And in some Asian cultures, it's disrespectful, right, mm. to make eye contact with people. So I can understand that in some cultures, some 
could be a cultural thing, could be a personal thing, mm. that eye contact is very uncomfortable, which yeah. is crazy because, like, I love making eye contact. Me too. <laughs> I'll make awkward I mean, eye I've contact. I've been told I make too yeah, much yeah. eye contact. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not looking away. I'm like staring into yeah. your soul. <laughs> I love it. It's the best way to connect with someone. Do you know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. Like, just but making that eye is eye just my communication them. style and I think yeah. it's yours as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And then if they have blue Tasha eyes. and I actually <laughs> haven't blinked once in this podcast. <laughs> like, I'm like, staring at you. <laughs> my eyes are getting itchy now, though, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is this is could this could be something else as well. I don't think you want to. You do have to. Uh, this one, I would you be have to be careful. With. I would yeah. be very careful. I wouldn't. Pull, I wouldn't call someone out straight away. Yeah. Only because, like, I'm talking about my own lived experience. My husband yeah. struggles to make eye contact, mm. and I love making eye contact. So you can see how that it could just be something there. that makes someone feel uncomfortable. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and they and the point here is that they could very well still be listening to you. Yeah. That's a thing. So you can't assume that yeah. one means two you yeah. know what i mean like they they could very well be listening yeah. to everything that you're saying and like if you're driving i don't want you to make eye contact with me just focus <laughs> on the road yeah. that gets me you know the people that like as they're driving they want to look oh, at you yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah. i literally was like don't look at me it's cool it's fine <laughs> just keep driving <laughs> yeah all right we've got two more let's share them all right cool uh looking at their devices oh. i think you can absolutely call this one out yeah Maybe, again, in a safe way if you don't know them very well, only because there could be something really serious happening on the other side. Yeah, so you're um, passive intent. You're but right. But that's where I think communication comes into play. Like that person, in my opinion, should just say to you, hey, Linda, I'm so sorry, Yeah. but I've got something serious happening over here. Like can you give me five minutes or yeah. can, can we do this again another day? Like yeah. just be open with it yeah. rather than being that person that does well, always look down at your phone 100%. and give people divided attention because yeah, that's what is frustrating and annoying. I was annoying. Uh, watching a Simon Sinek talk about this the other day and he was saying how, and this is more relevant to parents, but I think the, the rule applies just in human behaviour in general, but he's like when you are in a room with a person and your phone is here, and I, I, no offence, I'm not using you as an example, but your phone's here, it's in mm. front of you and it's face up. Like if anything happens on that phone, of course it's going to take your attention. Yeah. Right? And that's going to take you away from this conversation that we're having right now. Yeah. So uh, like, again, I don't have an issue with it. I'm just sharing something. I, I and, and the same rule applies to parenting. When I'm with my three-year-old, if I've got my phone in my pocket, if I've got it on in front of me sitting, even if it's face down, mm. it's still indicating that that phone is in my presence right now and it yep. is important. It's more if anything happens to it, I'm going to pick it up and it becomes more important than the thing that's happening and what's going on, right? Yeah. So I've, I'm in the habit now where I just like leave my phone. Like I actually half the time don't know where it is and I, yep. I love it because it's like <laughs> with it. Yeah. Beep, sorry, get into another one. Um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, it's, uh, anyway. But, um, yeah, I, I agree. I would I would call someone up on it Perf- professionally. One hundred percent. I'd just be like, "Yo, leave your phone in another room." Yeah. Again, you got the. I got the rapport with my team. I can say that with them. Yeah. Someone that's fairly new. Um, I would probably just gauge it out and say, "Look, I have no issues with people having phones mm. in meetings on their desks. Uh, but if some and if something crazy is going on in your life that you need to be actively on your phone, just let mm-hmm. us know." Yeah. Like we're always going to give you all of the benefit of the doubt, and we will always give you trust. We don't ask you to get it with us first, and uh, yeah, just. Listen, like actively listen when you're with us. And if you need yeah. to take a moment, take a moment. I would rather you do that than sit here and pretend like you're listening and just be distracted by the buzzing. We um we had a colleague uh, years ago and this person would work with their phone upright in front of them. Um, mm. Now, like we end up having to let them go because – their productivity wasn't great. They had low productivity and their attention to detail wasn't great. Yeah, just performance. Yeah, and it's like it's it's one of those things that I'm not saying was the cause of that because Maybe. lots of things kind of compiled yeah. to lead to like, you know, low productivity and, and low attention to detail, but that absolutely is one of the things that we notice Yeah, that, you know, that their eyes would look down all the time at their phone whilst in the middle of a task at work. Mm -hmm. When you're focusing on two things, like we all know multitasking isn't a good thing. You shouldn't multitask. It's not beneficial to your productivity. So those little things, absolutely, like they they contribute to these these problems in the workplace. Yeah. Yeah. This, um, I agree. 
this last one, I want to I want to expand on it slightly because we are in this very virtual world now, right? It's pretty obvious when someone's body language is not listening to you. They even just walk away or they turn around or, you know, like they're just like, like not listening, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Um, but what about when we're on a virtual call, Linda, when someone's not listening to you? What does that look like? Um, oh, good question. So they might be like looking off to the side. Yep. Um, maybe fiddling with something on their desk. Yep. Um, they could be looking down on their phone. Yep, yep. You just get their forehead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then like they're not even aware of where they are in frame. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, you can still make eye contact over a virtual call. If you're not then, listening or you are? No, no, if you're listening. Oh, if you are, yeah. So yeah. if they're not like meeting you where you are in the screen, it's pretty easy to see if they're like staring yes. at you or not. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. also to see when it's easy to see when someone's eyes are veering off into yes. another screen yeah. and like on notifications. Especially if you've got two screens, yeah. Yeah, 100%. yeah. So there are a lot of cues. And there's facial cues as well. Like if you if you really zone into either your clients or your colleagues, your your team members will have facial cues when they are and aren't listening. And there's, it might be something very subtle, like you're right. The yeah. eyes, the eyes go down a little bit. The mouth, the mouth might move slightly, right? Mm. Their head mm. might like talk to the side slightly again, depending on what they're doing. Yeah. And it's those little subtle things that if you can pick up in your team and in your clients, um, in a virtual world, they're great opportunities to to not so much as go, oh hey Linda, you're not listening, but like, um, everything all right, Linda? Something I can help you with. Mm. Like, and if you know someone's not listening, I think the worst thing you can do is be like, oh, hey, Linda, what do you think? Because yeah. then you know they're going to say, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening, or they're going to just make up some bull. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. just have some empathy. Maybe they're feeling under the pump. Maybe they don't want to be in that meeting because it's a waste of their time. And that's a whole yeah. other podcast episode as to why <laughs> your meetings suck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just be, I think, pay attention, be aware of things, assume positive intent. And, you know, some of these signs might show. Someone's not actively listening to you and we've given you some tips on what you can do with them. Yeah. Anything else you want to add, Linda? No, I think rather than get upset, it's just about helping each other. That's it. That's all it's about. Always. Cool. Linda, what an absolute pleasure. Likewise. I will see you next time. All right, guys. See ya.